So, so Willie, yesterday, of course, if you, you went to any major news publication, if you went to Drudge, I mean, it was lit up with stories about how here's a shock, breaking news, please stop everything. Donald Trump has weaknesses in the general election. I mean, it's crazy that, that I mean, that's even a news story now. But I, we're going to talk about that in a second. But I want to talk about how remarkable it is that you have House Republicans, people that are in the party that Ronald Reagan used to be a member of, that are sitting by knowing they're causing Ukrainians to die, sitting by knowing they're standing in the way of Israeli funding, and they have from the beginning. You know, they try, tried some some trick about, oh, well, w w this time Israeli aid, we never paid for any other aid, but we're gonna have to pay for Israeli aid. That's what the speaker was saying about Israel. And then on the border, they're just out and out saying, we're gonna let fentanyl keep flooding across the border, killing Americans even though we could stop it. We're going to let illegal immigrants keep flooding across the border, causing chaos for communities, chaos for cities like New York by uncontrolled immigration. Immigration's great, it's gotta be controlled. We now have the Senate Republicans and the White House and the Senate Democrats with a deal, the toughest border deal ever, that would stop fentanyl from flooding across the border, stop, they're saying no. And they're admitting, Republicans are admitting, House Republicans, no, we don't want to fix this. We don't want to fix the fentanyl problem right now. We don't want to fix the illegal immigrant party uh, problem right now because Joe Biden might get a little bit of credit for that. That's mm. how sick they are. They're saying keep the border open for another year. Yeah, they got as good a deal as they could ever hope for sitting right in front of them. And it actually reminds you a little bit of 2016 when the the entire chant was build that wall, build that wall. They loved the immigration issue. They said there was a crisis at the border. And then Donald Trump gets elected. They control both houses of the Congress. For two years, they own Washington and do nothing. And there's no border wall built. Yeah. They like the issue. They like to bang the drum about it. Now they even have some of their own people, Republicans, saying, we're there. We're at the 20-yard line. We're entering the red zone, this thing that we've said we've wanted for so long. And you won't take the deal. You won't take the deal. And now we're even hearing some yeah. rumblings, Jonathan Lemire, inside the Senate, that Mitch McConnell might be getting a little shaky on this and saying, well, the nominee, what he's calling Donald Trump inside this caucus, the nominee doesn't want us to do this deal. So the House has been the problem. Is it spreading to the Senate now is the it's, question. It sure looks that way. That The analysis appears to be changing, that it's not just the House Republicans. It now looks like it's going to be the Senate mm -hmm. Republicans, too. Minority Leader McConnell, in a closed-door meeting with his colleagues yesterday, suddenly spoke very differently about this deal than he had in the past. We know McConnell has been very strong and adamant that the U.S. needs to support Ukraine. He still is. But now he thinks these, these, these packages might need to be separate, which would doom the Ukraine funding because right. there wouldn't be enough support because the only way to get some Republicans to back Ukraine would be to have this border security deal. But McConnell is admitting that Trump is saying we don't want this deal. And he is suggesting, he says here, quote, the politics on this have changed. Mm. He says we don't want to do anything to undermine him, him being Trump, meaning we don't want to take an election issue away from Trump. And if McConnell suddenly goes soft on this deal, it is going to be doomed. And it shows again the grip that Trump has on the party, and also Mitch McConnell. Though he at times has spoken up strongly against Trump, he has acknowledged he will vote for him again. He did not follow through trying to convict Trump in his second impeachment trial post-January 6th, and now he seems to be doing his bidding for his campaign, even if it hurts the American people and submarines a deal that most people say they want. So, Joe, we might be going from a situation where you could have had both. You could have had yeah, immigration exactly. reform, and support for Ukraine to having neither. And by the way, we should point out that Ukraine is almost out of ammunition yes. and their leadership is crying yeah. from the mountaintops. Effectively, this war is now in the hands of the United States Congress. We can't win without the United States Congress doing something. Yeah. And that Congress is sitting on its hands right now. And the rest of the world is watching.